Dear colleagues, we uh, have been uh, operating with the understanding that the package of the proposed amendments resulting from the work of this group would be finalized by January 2024 to meet the four-month deadline stated in Article 55. However, we believe that uh, we all share the same sentiment that uh, realistically the whole package of amendments will probably not be ready by January 2024. We would like to ask the uh, Secretariat whether procedurally we could continue working until the 76th World Health Assembly in May 2024. I'd like to ask the Secretariat to provide some guidance in this matter. Uh, thank you, Co-Chair. Uh, the Health Assembly in decision WHA 75-9 requested the working group, and I quote, to establish a program of work consistent with decision EB 153 and taking into consideration the report of the IHR Review Committee to propose a package of targeted amendments for consideration by the 77th World Health Assembly in accordance with Article 55 of the International Health Regulations, close quote. Article 55 of the IHR, which is referred to in Decision 75-9, sets out two procedural requirements relating to proposed amendments. The first one is that, quote, proposals for amendments shall be submitted to the Health Assembly for its consideration, close quote. The second one is that, open quote, the text of any such proposed amendment shall be communicated to all states' parties by the Director General at least four months before the Health Assembly at which it is proposed for consideration, close quote. Again, that's the text of the relevant article of the IHR, Article 55. Article 55 of the IHR, including this four-month requirement, has never been applied to amendments submitted collectively by a subdivision of the Health Assembly, which is exactly what the WGIHR is. The WGIHR is a subdivision of the Health Assembly under Rule 41 of the Rules of Procedure of the Health Assembly. Thus, there are no precedents to rely on with respect to the manner in which the four-month requirements set out in Article 55 should be satisfied. That is to say, Article 55 has been applied to amendments proposed by a state party or by the Director General, but never by a subdivision of the Health Assembly. Uh, indeed, uh, it has only been applied with respect to, um, uh, uh, it has not been applied with respect to any subdivision. This is a first. Accordingly, an option for consideration by the working group would be for the Director General to communicate in January 2023 the following documents to all states' parties. First, the proposed amendments as originally submitted by member states and already communicated by the Secretariat to all states' parties by email. And second, the proposed amendments as they might be shown on the screen at the closure of WGHR 6. This approach would allow work to continue in the WGIHR, if necessary, up until the 77th Health Assembly itself, recognizing the importance of complementarity with the INB process, which, as we know, is mandated to work up until the 77th WHA. In addition to that, the working group may consider requesting the Secretariat to include in the January communication from the Director General, a clarification according to which the amendments from the final session of the WGIHR, which could be conceivably as late as May 2024, if necessary, would allow these uh, final uh, results of, the May, of such a session to be formally submitted to the 77th World Health Assembly. A note on this deadline of the 77th World Health Assembly. If the deadline is not met, 
the WGHR would be expected to report to the Health Assembly in May 2024. That agreement could not be reached on the proposed amendments. This deadline cannot be changed as it was set out in decision WHA 759. This approach just outlined for your consideration would fulfill the four month requirement in its purpose as prescribed by Article 55 of the IHR, while at the same time allowing the working group to continue its consideration and negotiation of the proposed amendments, including possible modifications to the package that would be communicated to states' parties. Should this approach be considered satisfactory, the WHA, the working group may wish to consider reflecting it in the report of this session of the WGIHR. Thank you, co-chairs. Thank you very much, Steve, for uh, this procedural insights. So um, the deadline <clears throat> is standing as it is. It is a deadline, so uh, I mean, the May 24th, we have uh, to uh, report back, uh, preferably on the finalized uh, text of the uh, amendments. And we will procedurally have to continue working uh, on the uh, revised, uh, on the proposed amendments until the uh, deadline is there. So um, with this uh, uh, in mind, I would like to um, open the floor to member states and other stakeholders to share their uh, comments or questions. Unako, please take the floor. Je vous remercie, Monsieur. Many thanks, uh, Co-Chair. Good morning. First of all, um, I want to express my uh, thanks for all the work that's been done, all the work you've done over the last uh, weeks, and also thank you for the results that uh, you've conveyed. We believe that's going to help us uh, make progress. The approach that has just been explained uh, by uh, legal counsel is uh, an approach we took last year or maybe two years ago. And we think that it's, uh, it's a good one and uh, in accordance uh, with the provisions of the IHR. However, this should not be uh, an obstacle to us uh, on the road to achieving a the maximum level of consensus and progress uh, this week uh, so that we can have uh, as much progress made on the text as possible. Which obviously means that we will have to uh, uh, make compromises and we will have to emerge all equally dissatisfied at the end of the day. You can rest assured you'll have our full cooperation. Thank you. Thank you very much, Munaku. The floor now is for India. Thank you, Co-Chair, and thanks to the Legal Council for explaining uh, the, the proposed way forward. But if I can ask the legal con counsel to maybe reiterate once again, just for clarity, what will be the entire suite of amendments which would be transmitted to the EB or, or to the WHA? What is the package, so to say? Thanks. Thank you very much, India. Kenya, please take the floor. Thank you very much, Co-Chair. Now making this statement on behalf of the 47 member states of the WHO Africa region, and I apologize because I might go over time. We thank the Co-Chairs for providing an update on the recent intersessional activities which have a bearing on the work of the WGIHR. In relation to the parallel negotiating tracks, the African member states support continued coordination 
as necessary between the two bureau in the spirit of ensuring that the two instruments are synergistic and complementary in strengthening the health emergency and uh, prevention, preparedness, and response and recovery. During the intersessional period, the African member states were pleased to participate in the joint briefing on the alert system, including considerations for the definition and criteria for the fake pandemic continuum. From the presentations, we noted that the current alert system has been functioning well under the IHR, and that what was problematic during the COVID-19 response was the response function, in particular actions related to equitable access to the health products and supplies. We also noted that the fake determination does not currently trigger a mechanism for the development, procurement, and distribution of res response measures such as diagnostics, medicines, or vaccines. As such, we welcome the ongoing discussions in both the WGIHR and the INB to address these gaps and ensure equitable access to health products and sustainable financing. On the 19th of September, member states of both the WGIH and the INB were also briefed on the financing landscape for health emergency preparedness and response by WHO and other stakeholders. From the presentation and ensuing discussions, the African member states noted the importance of close coordination of the multiple existing financing efforts to ensure synergies and minimize inefficiencies, as well as a need to tr for trigger in both instruments for financing of the different work streams based on the prevailing situation. We also noted the significant funding gap that currently exists and the reality that no one fund could adequately address the needs related to PPPR. The African member states have made a proposal for a member state-led financing mechanism under Article 44 to support implementation of the IHR. We therefore reiterate the importance of flexible and predictable financing arrangements which are not adversely affected when financing preferences and priorities change. Co-chair, as we move closer to the deadline set by the Assembly for conclusion of our work, the African group wishes to reiterate that in view of the interrelated nature of the IHR articles and the annexes, the comprehensive discussion and adoption of a single package of amendments by the Health Assembly remains our preferred approach. This will ensure that we address the equity gaps identified in line with this working group and the Health Assembly mandate. Therefore, the African member states are keen to see tangible progress on equity-related amendment proposals put forward by state parties to prevent escalation of fakes to pandemics by building the necessary capacities in countries. This is a clear mandate and obligation that will determine the success of the WGHR. Indeed, the process leading up to the recent adoption of the UN political declaration on pandemic prevention, preparedness and response re-emphasized the importance of our work and the imperative for all IHR state parties to commit to reforms that will ensure that we are better prepared for future pandemics. In closing, the African member states wish to express our appreciation to the Bureau, the Secretariat, and all IHR state parties for their efforts to steer the discussions towards consensus. We also note the revised co-chair text proposals on Articles 4, 5, 9, 10, 48, and 49 um, which were circulated last week, and we look forward to their detailed discussion later this week. We remain committed to engaging this week and in coming months with the co-chairs and other state parties to fulfill the mandate and timelines conferred uh, by the Assembly. I thank you. Thank you very much, Kenya, for the statements on behalf of the African region. Brunei, please take the floor. Thank you, Co-Chair. Brunei would like to reiterate our support for the process, and we want to thank the Bureau, the Secretariat, for facilitating lively and engaging discussions um, over the last, um, over September. Um, and while a lot was learned, we need to transition from the discussion stage and maintain momentum by starting work on bringing the key points of the discussion, which we've had informally, um, into concrete texts. 
With this in mind, uh, in light of looking at concrete proposals, we thank the co-chairs for their textual proposals for the various articles. We appreciate that this is challenging work and that there are risks in consolidating inputs from the previous meetings into concrete proposals. Uh, we hope that there will be ample time this week to give due consideration to the co-chairs' proposals. Third, um, as we progress through the amendments and the various articles and try to find consensus, it's important that we don't lose the main focus of our work and preserve what already works in the IHR. We would urge caution about making amendments considering unintended consequences of such amendments and the risk that any added complexity could add obfuscation rather than clarity to a process that we feel works reasonably well under extremely time-sensitive and challenging situations. Fourth, we continue to believe that the existing IHR framework allows for countries to meet their obligations in a way that is custom, tailored and aligned with their national priorities and processes. So Brunei would urge caution before significantly adding new obligations to state parties, many of whom already find it challenging to meet their existing obligations. We would support the need to find a suitable balance between specificity in detail around the precise mechanism um, for delivery of such obligations and flexibility taking into account the universal application of such obligations. Finally, we are pleased to see consideration by the co-chairs and the procedural clarifications by the Secretariat for how we can meet our deadline for proposing the finalised package of amendments. We know informally there has been some discussion about potential delays um, in view of both the INB and the IHR process. We believe that it's important that we don't lose momentum on this process and we should give it our all to ensure that the WHA 76 deadline is met. For those of us who work in the field on the ground, as time passes from the acute phase of COVID-19, we are already beginning to see a collective loss of memory. Um, it's important that we don't forget the disruption and loss of the life public health emergencies can result in, and strengthening our global health our security architecture should continue to be of the utmost priority, even um, post-COVID. Um, so thank you, Co-Chairs. Thank you very much, Pranay, for these wise words. Uh, Bangladesh. Thank you, Co-Chair. Uh, just I will uh, make a short comment uh, on the expectation from the IHR amendment. Probably we need to recall that um, the amendment of IHR actually was triggered uh, from the, uh, the, on the basis of the lessons learned during the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, and that is, it should be our felt. And uh, the health inequities uh, that were seriously felt actually during the pandemic had to be has to be have to be addressed under the aegis of the amended IHR. Otherwise, we will never see any 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 shift in the current process. Uh, certainly, we are not looking forward for any kind of status quo of our approach. Uh, that is why uh, uh, the WGH uh, WGIHR should determine how it should go forward in a, uh, instead of being influenced by. Uh, by the by the discussion happening outside it is very important because the people having discussion here are engaged in this process during the last three years I do believe so they know much better so that uh, that uh, kind of speech sh should be maintained um, and about the scope principle uh, these things uh, um, are uh, uh, have been widely discussed uh, and we know the difficulties uh, but one thing should be maintained that the member states have made uh, amendment proposals based on their limitations and concern so these should be treated as a package otherwise we will never see any kind of changes in future uh, if we go through the decision EB 150.3, we see clearly that we have agreed to modernize actually the IHR, not to maintain the status quo. And for that, um, for that, we have to do whatever it is required. Thank you. Thank you, Bangladesh, Ethiopia. Uh, thank you, thank you, co-chair, and uh, good morning, everyone, my uh, distinguished delegates. It's nice to be here uh, in this work. I think it's fifth time, but it looks like we have been here for very many, many years, but really we are there still. 
So it's a great pleasure, uh, really, to, to, to hear that uh, we are all still uh, in momentum. Uh, saying this, uh, Ethiopia aligns itself with uh, African Group statement delivered by Kenya, and also we support uh, the, the previous speaker, uh, my distinguished delegate from Bangladesh, emphasized that I think we need to be very careful on, on the proposal of delaying or I don't know how, how can I use the, the best word to, to consider the Secretary's proposal on uh, having a room on uh, extension of the, the mini deadline, I think we put on WHI, WJHR, uh, which we all know before EB. So, uh, it's okay to work through WHA, but we want to be very cautious that we started in a very important articles at first, but we are not moving that fast as we wished on those articles, in, which is very much related with equity. Then our mandate for this working group is includes specifically the amendments which should be including the equity related provisions which were lacking from, from previous IHR. Uh, and also, it's very clear from, from the working group already established before WGIHR mandated, and also every works of independent uh, organs in, in this process. So I think it's the right time to focus the remaining uh, two months on those equity-related articles first, then if once we dig out those challenging articles uh, for for the global betterness of uh, the landscape, I think we can, we can consider whatever uh, takes it the time that we want. So other than that, like if we put those uh, major amendments for later stage, I think in my country capacity will be very much challenged to accept those amendments on timelines. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ethiopia. Uh, Tanzania, please take the floor. Thank you, Chair, for giving me this floor. Um, I would like first to reiterate what uh, has been uh, cautioned by the former speaker and uh, also the wise words from uh, Brunei. Um, when we started this discussion, we had some statements like, uh, the elephant is in the room, sensing that uh, we really have to work very quick. And also statements like, uh, we have the butterfly on our hands. All this tells us that uh, we really have to work with agents perhaps we have to consider modalities and on how we can have more time so that uh, we deliver we deliver on time and not having the extension uh, to May, uh, like having some modalities of uh, more sessions uh, so that we finish the work as as we can, but uh, also be mindful of the proce processes that are going on in IMB because the issues are also going in IMB. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to give the floor to the Secretariat to respond to the question from India. Thank you, Co-Chair, and I thank the, uh, the distinguished delegate of India um, with respect to clarification on certain aspects of uh, what is um, uh, considerations for a possible approach, but it is not a, um, a secretariat proposal, just to be clear. This is a possible approach for the consideration of the working group, but very specifically in terms of the communications that would be provided. Uh, this approach would envision two communications from the Director General to 
uh, all uh, states parties and all members of the working group. Uh, the first would come in January, um, and this would be two pieces of that communication. First, uh, the proposed amendments as originally already provided. The second piece would be the results of WGIHR 6, which will take place on dis from December 7th to 8th. By the way, uh, that is preceded by a session of the INB, which takes place on December 4th to 6th. So the two pieces for the January communication would be the originals resent to you. You've already received that big package. And the second piece would be the snapshot of what would be on screen at the end of WGHR 6. Then, following what could be under this approach, if the working group uh, uh, felt this was appropriate, what could be following f a future session of the WGIHR, for example, WGHR 7 or maybe even 8, again, it's all in your hands, and that could take place conceptually again, for your consideration in April, uh, would be the package, if you arrived at it, that would go to all member states as well as to the Health Assembly. So two communications, conceptually the first in January with those two pieces, the second uh, following whatever the uh, final session of the WGIHR would be. The idea here is that Article 55, in its basic purpose, is intended to uh, support the principle of fair and due notice. And fair notice means that notice is timely and complete. So in this sense, um, there would be a timely notice in January of what was on the table and what was, uh, what was uh, the situation, the snapshot at the end of uh, December. And then, of course, the package, if that is arrived at, uh, would be provided right after the uh, WGHR session preceding the 77th World Health Assembly. Um, so I hope that clarifies. Uh, happy to uh, uh, further expand on that if it's desired. But those would be the two communications that this approach, if uh, adopted by the working group, that would be the content of those two communications and the timing for them. Thank you. Thank you very much, Steve, for that explanation. So the deadline is a deadline. There are no intentions to uh, delay any deadlines. However, we, what we are looking uh, as, a, as a group is how to procedurally proceed from now until the deadline. And that's what uh, Steve has explained. I'd like also to ask Ashley for additional comments. Thank you, uh, Abdullah, and thank you for the comments and questions, and also, Steve, your clarifications. Uh, just to reiterate the point Abdullah made, we, we have a deadline that is May ne uh, next year, the next World Health Assembly. For those of us who were around when the 2005 international health regulations were negotiated and agreed, the final meeting finished uh, on the weekend before the WHA started uh, at 4 o'clock in the morning on a Saturday morning. Let me be clear, we're not intending to do that. However, the point is we, and, and Steve has uh, advised us that we, we, there is no legal impediment to us continuing our work beyond January. The second point, just to confirm, is we're not required to report to the executive board as part of this process. We are required to provide a package of amendments and that could be a work in progress package of amendments that the secretariat has suggested we might do in January to the uh, Director General, Dr Tedros, to communicate to Member States, even as we uh, let the Director General know how we intend to continue our work to ensure we do deliver on our, our mandate. And that's the, the final point I will make is just, Steve, I think it was a slip of the tongue that we, we might uh, get agreement. Uh, before May, we will get agreement. Uh, we're all focused. We know how important this task is. Uh, and we need to remain focused this week. If we agree to continue our work beyond January or beyond our scheduled meeting in December, that does not mean we slow down 
or take our eye off the ball. We need to keep making progress, and in particular, and I've heard the interventions from uh, the African region, from member states of the African region, from Bangladesh, we need to make progress on those challenging issues. And we will, we will make time to make sure we discuss them further this week. Thank you, Abdullah. India, followed by Nigeria. Thank you, Chair. Um, thank you so much to the Legal Council for uh, clarifying that. I'm just trying to uh, read the room and understand that nobody wants me to be a process wonk right now. So I'll be happy to have a chat separately with Steve on the two uh, possible ways forward uh, which which uh, we may want to discuss at the end of the meeting. So thank you so much, Chair, and Steve, I will look out for me. Thanks. Good luck, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> Let's move on then to uh, the next paragraph, which is one that's got some some new and important uh, matters in it. So I'll read through this paragraph. Paragraph five, please, if you scroll down. Yep. The co-chairs noted that, in reference to decision WHA 75-9, it appeared unlikely that the package of amendments would be ready by January 2024 in particular the proposed amendments that cover topics common to both the WG, IHR and INB processes. In this regard, the working group agreed to the following approach. In January 2024, the Director General will communicate to all states parties the proposed amendments as originally submitted by member states in brackets already shared via circular letter on 2nd of October 2022, close brackets, as well as the negotiated text on the proposed amendments as shown on screen at the closure of the sixth meeting of the WG IHR. So in a sense, that uh, subparagraph is, is, the, is the status update that we agreed we would provide to the Director General and that, that then he could communicate uh, to all states' parties. And then the second subpara. Further, the Director General will submit to the 77th Health Assembly the package of amendments agreed at the final session of the working group, comma, and it currently says to be held before May 2024. That could be restrictive. Again, we're not planning to work up until four in the morning uh, just before the WHA, but perhaps it would be better to say here to be held before the May 2024 Health Assembly. It's just uh, less restrictive. So welcome any uh, feedback or comments on the text, including that uh, slight change to the end of that subparagraph. Recognising also that we discussed this afternoon some possible dates for uh, for meetings of this working group in uh, the first part of 2024 in February and April. So that's capturing our intention to uh, continue the work, but cognizant of our deadline. Monaco, please, online. Thank you, Co-Chair. First of all, I wanted to thank you and uh, the entirety of the Bureau for all your hard work and for your help, as well as that provided by the Secretariat. That support is absolutely essential for us to uh, end on time. It's more a comment than uh, an addition to the text talked about the possibility of maybe ending at uh, 4 a.m. Uh, on the opening day of the World Health Assembly. We might run into the same situation with the IMB. And so probably as soon as possible, starting at the beginning of uh, next, uh, next year, we discuss with the IMB Bureau uh, so that we have a 
clear understanding of the last uh, work that needs to be completed. This is especially important for us a small delegation so we can work in the best conditions possible with a view to avoiding such an event. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Monica, and I know that's a, a comment made from, from experience as well, so uh, we'll take that on board. And uh, as you and others know, our uh, our communication and working with the other bureau is, is ongoing. Uh, Tunisia, please. Thank you, Co-Chair. First of all, I'd like to support the comments made uh, by the Ambassador of Monaco. The Secretariat has played an essential role uh, when it comes to setting out possible dates, dates that have not been uh, rejected. So therefore, in this paragraph 5, or maybe in another paragraph, might we indicate the dates that were mentioned by the Secretariat. Thank you. Thank you, Tunisia. Just um, get advice from the Secretariat on that, and I'm just looking around the room if there are any other uh, interventions. India, please. Thank you, Co-Chair. Just wanted to ask legal. This was briefly covered by Steve on Monday. I understand the logic of five, para five first point that is coming from Amendment Article 55. Is I mean, there might be, why is there 55 too? I mean, I'm sure there is very good reason. So if, if legal can just remind me. And also, the WGIHR first will have to submit the amendments to the DG. Only then would the DG be able to submit it to WHA. Are we missing something or this is, this is completely fine? Thanks so much. Thank you, India. If, uh, if our uh, legal colleagues are ready to, to respond, I'll hand them the floor, please. Thank you, Co-Chair, and thank you very much, India. Um, so the, um, uh, the relevant reference here is WHA 75.9, of course. It's paragraph 2F, which provides that the package uh, of amendments for consideration by the 77th World Health Assembly uh, will uh, be done in accordance with Article 55 of the IHRs, with the totality of Article 55, the idea of the first uh, bullet under Paragraph 5 in the report is essentially a status update uh, in line with uh, the requirements and capturing the results uh, of the December meeting. The point of the second uh, bullet is to ensure a uh, a final uh, uh, and full status report by the Director General uh, in a very formal fashion. Um, this isn't strictly necessary at this point, but uh, to have here, because it will apply ordinarily, but the, uh, the uh, view of the in to ensure transparency and uh, ensure that all are aware of the timetable of these, uh, it was proposed to be added uh, as a further clarifying point paragraph five. I hope that helps. Thank you. So uh, I notice India wants to uh, respond again. Uh, and just before I do give you the floor, just um, I've just talked to the Secretariat uh, regarding the suggestion from Tunisia. Uh, and because we haven't yet confirmed the dates, and we need to discuss them with our INB colleagues. And as uh, our, our, um, the delegates from Namibia suggested, you know, map out all the different meetings. Uh, our preference is not to include the exact dates uh, here yet in the meeting report. But of course, those will be confirmed and circulated as soon as possible after the meeting. Thank you. So back to India and then to Brunei, please. Thank you so much, Chair. Apologies for taking the floor again. But just to clarify with legal again, is there a requirement for WGIHR to then submit the agreed package to the DG? And is there a need for that to be mentioned? Or second point is OK. It's fit for what we need to do in May as it stands. Thanks so much. Thank you. The, um, uh, 
Uh, so uh, procedurally, and pursuant to the mandate of the Health Assembly, the WGIHR is a subdivision of the Health Assembly. So the regular process for subdivisions of the Health Assembly is to have their uh, work reported through the Director General to the Assembly. So it's a, um, it's a matter of standard procedure for subdivisions of the Health Assembly uh, and complies as well with the terms uh, and intent of Article 55 of the International Health Regulations. Thanks uh, again, Steve. Uh, we'll go to Brunei, please. Thanks, Co-Chair. I remember, I, I'm just trying to recall um, when you told us uh, that when they were negotiating the package, the first package of the IHR 2005, it went up uh, to just a day before, right? Um, I, I am uh, wondering, um, and maybe Lilo can help as well, what happens if it goes up, you know, to the day off or um, the, you know, the, the one or two days after, in which case I wonder whether rather than restrict ourselves to saying before the May 2024 Wealth Health Assembly, we put by the May 2024 Wealth Health Assembly because it gives us time even during the assembly, before, you know, if the assembly is already opened, uh, we can still have that first, second or third day to discuss and then finalize it during the assembly. So by the rather than before the could be one option. Thank you, Brunei. Before I hand the, uh, the floor to the uh, legal counsel, um, I don't have any intention of us working through the <laughs> World Health Assembly on this, but, but there may be a good reason. I think it, the, the work has to be completed ahead of the World Health Assembly, but there may be a legal view on this as well. Yeah, well, uh, thank you, Co-Chair, and thank you, uh, Brunei, for, for that question. Um, so yes, as the Secretary does prepare contingency planning, even of Plan C and further, um, uh, the possibility of uh, a continuation which would not be desirable, uh, certainly from the perspectives of the mandate as well as the, um, uh, the working group and the secretariat. But if that were to occur, the suggested approach would be that the, uh, there would be an interim report of the working group to the assembly which would be received on the first day uh, and then with, uh, with, that, with the understanding of that report, work could continue. Uh, but uh, it would be, the Health Assembly would be informed of any uh, situation along those lines, uh, and uh, if uh, necessary, uh, then work would continue. But again, this would be a situation uh, to be avoided. I hope that uh, helps clarify. Thank you. Thanks, Steve. And uh, I dare say this is, uh, the wording here is a statement of our intent uh, based on where we're at now and based on the mandate we have. And in, in, in the chapeau, of course, in paragraph five, it says, in this regard, the working group agreed to the following approach. So that's what we're agreeing to as our approach here. Um, and uh, I think we've had a good explanation from the legal counsel. Uh, I see Ethiopia, please. Very much, Co Chair. We um, recall that we had um, we had a discussion. Uh, we had uh, we had um, raised some concerns that um, perhaps the notion of um, indicating that the package of amendments would not be ready, and in particular the proposed amendments that cover topics common to both WGHI and INB process. And considering that those uh, overlapping elements are v very critical to the operationalization of equity, perhaps it would be um, important to add a third line, uh, which would indicate an approach to be followed by the co-chairs to, ad ad to address those points and perhaps um, um, make sure that uh, we, we have uh, those discussions at, a at an earlier stage rather than waiting to the later stages. So that they will not be, we will reach um, a good level of understanding and consensus on those elements um, before the discussion progresses, and we're put into a, a, a point where we have to compromise on a lot of issues. Thank you. Thank you, Ethiopia. Can I just check? Have you got a specific text proposal that you think we should add into this paragraph? Um, we can work on that, but perhaps um, if the idea is, um, we can. 
can work on that, but uh, I think it's better to reflect the idea. It's, it, it, the idea um, has merit in reflection because that uh, uh, reflects our concerns and uh, discussions we had in the meeting. Thank you. From I guess from my perspective, I've, so we can capture that idea. If you've got a, if you've got some, even if you can write some some possible wording, and we can think about where we put that in, we can come back to this article, this paragraph. Everyone's otherwise comfortable with it, uh, but let's go to Malaysia and then Namibia, please. Thank you, uh, Co-Chair. Uh, we we would like to seek clarification. Um, here it says that the DG will share, will communicate to all state parties as well the negotiated text, like the word negotiated text. Um, but if we can recall, this negotiated text will be prepared by the Bureau. We just want to see whether that can be put in, that we're missing that element to say that the negotiated negotiated tax uh, will be prepared by the Bureau. Um, so we wonder if we can include that component as well. Thank you. Thank you, Malaysia. Uh, the intention here is that actually it's, it's the Bureau's text at the start of that meeting, the sixth meeting, but by the end of it, it will be reflect the discussion and negotiation that has happened during the meeting. So it will be rather than a bureau's text, it will be the outcome of our negotiations during that meeting. So it's the negotiated text as at that point at the end of WGIHR 6, um, not, not at the start of the meeting. So as it, I, I, wouldn't, I would, uh, wouldn't like to give any sense that what will be circulated to member states at that point in time will be the bureau's text, but actually it will be what we have agreed as a working group at that point in time. Does that answer the concern? Um, uh, thank you, Kucha. Uh, but I guess we're missing that process that the Bureau will prepare a text. Um, it's not in the report, I guess. It's probably not in the para five, but um, I think perhaps that we should mention that the Bureau will prepare Bureau's text for the next IHR and then during the next uh, meeting we would then negotiate and then come up with this negotiated text to submit. Thank you. Yep. Yeah. Certainly, let's ha should we have a look at it at paragraph 5? Uh, at the moment paragraph 5 as it stands is, uh, is general language as we've done in our other reports and we've, uh, we will provide a detailed program of work including reference to Bureau's texts on different articles um, that subsequent to the meeting. But perhaps if we can pick up that point about whether we do include a reference to the intention of the Bureau to work up further proposals, if that's okay. So we'll, we'll look at it at paragraph five. Okay, thank you. Uh, Namibia and then the Russian Federation, please. Uh, thank you, Coach. Um, at paragraph five, I just wanted some clarity. Um, the words in particular, the proposed amendments that cover topics common to both the, the working group and the IMD process, would this imply that uh, we would have reached an agreement on the other proposed amendments by January already? Uh, is there a guarantee that uh, it's only the proposed amendments that cover topics common to both uh, the IHR and the uh, the INB that we would be considering after January, basically, uh, because that's kind of the reading there. That's what it implies, essentially. So I just wanted some clarity. Uh, thank you, Namibia. And uh, I feel uh, empowered to respond because uh, it was me who added this text into the initial draft of the report that the, that the Secretary provided. And um, it was certainly, I, th I think the we're all really clear, and that's hence the inclusion of the words, the package of amendments, it's all a package. The point I was trying to highlight here was that um, 
was the interrelationship between our two processes and those really important issues, as we know, like financing, access and benefit sharing, technology transfer, um, capacity building, are the ones that will require us to keep working in parallel uh, with, with the IMB process. There was certainly no intention to, uh, to imply even that uh, it's, we, we would have agreed everything except for these common areas. Um, we can see in our discussions this week that there's still a lot of work to do on many areas. So, you know, well, if you think uh, there's a better formulation here or if even this text could just come out, very open to that. So happy for you to, to revert if you want to. In the meantime, Russian Federation and then the EU, please. Thank you, Chair. Let me make some comments on uh, item five. Obviously, we are somewhat civil servants and we understand that every word ensures the guarantee and understanding of the process, but sometimes the bureaucratic work runs into a roadblock. I think uh, this was not the case on one and two, but on paragraph five there's an issue. If we look at uh, article 55 of the IHR, so number two, we, we hear any proposed amendment. This does not mean agreed. These are amendments that member states can or could consider and agree to. They should be approved four months before the WHA. These amendments that we're looking at were sent only 12 months before the WHO. So we are well within the time framework. So even item five is as well within the time frame. As for the second point, we want to uh, finish the work that was uh, set out before us, namely to agree on the amendments and we are ready to work until the very last minute. Why under item two is there no period after the word amendments agreed by a working group? If this happens in the last day, just before the last day, then we'll finish then. But but we should not set out any obs, obs, obstacles and then look for ways over these obstacles. If uh, even if if we still have the possibility to uh, to 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 get over these obstacles and finish our discussion. Thank you very much, uh, Russian Federation, and I'll, I'll certainly look to. Uh, legal counsel to respond and I think and what you're suggesting in the second sub paragraph here is it could simply say uh, the director further the director general will submit to the 77th health assembly the package of amendments agreed by the working group and and, and finish it even finish it there is that right okay. yes that's absolutely correct Okay, thank you, and I'll, I'll check in with the legal counsel, but the EU's asked for the floor, and before I give them the floor, Malaysia, sorry, just when I was responding to you, I, I should have said, if we could pick this up in paragraph eight, not paragraph five, so um, about whether we include a reference to the proposal of the Bureau to, to work up new text proposals, so sorry about that. Uh, EU, please. Thanks, Co-Chair. Thanks, Co-Chair, and I think I can make this intervention very short because I was just going to, as a friendly suggestion, suggest that the issue raised by Malaysia and their intervention could perhaps be dealt with in paragraph 8, indeed, which refers to, as we see, the intersessional period uh, between now and the, and, the, and the next meeting. So so perhaps that would be the, the, the best place to address that than uh, what Malaysia mentioned. Thank you. Thank you, EU. Uh, Steve, can I hand to you? And then... Um, Namibia, if, you, if you've got any further reflections, I'll be happy to I give the floor back to you. But in the meantime, Steve. Thank you very much, and I thank the Russian delegation. Um, <clears throat> the um, 
Article 55 uh, requires that there be proper uh, and full notice of any proposed amendments. The Russian delegation is absolutely correct. According to the mandate WHA, WHA 75-9, uh, all amendments received uh, by member states, which uh, are... Chair, sorry to interrupt you. There's an echo. Could the second mic be closed, please? State, sorry, thank you. To state party in Article 55-1 uh, is um, uh, those amendments that were submitted under 75-9 and that were circulated and communicated to all states' parties by the Director General on 4 October 2020, 2022. Uh, the Health Assembly also established the uh, WGIHR as a subdivision of the Health Assembly with a mandate to work on those proposed amendments. So as a legal matter, the first paragraph of Article 55 has been met by the communication of all amendments proposed by states' parties in that communication of 4 October 2022. Uh, the further updating are reports of a subdivision of the Health Assembly to the Health Assembly in line with the mandate provided in 70. 5.9, and in the spirit of Article 55, to ensure the full and complete notice to all states' parties of the developments of those amendments, uh, the approach that was discussed by the working group and appears in paragraph 5 was set out, which involves the update in January uh, of the text on screen, as shown on screen, at the closure of the sixth meeting. And then the final update at uh, the point that that is available uh, to the uh, World Health Assembly uh, in order for it to fulfill the uh, remainder of Article 55, containing Article 55.3, which is the consideration and any adoption pursuant to the relevant provisions uh, referred to in Article 55. Um, I hope that helps with an understanding of the positioning and uh, the, uh, the procedural uh, good order of the approach contained in paragraph 5. Thank you, Steve. Um, I require some contemplation by the delegate from the Russian Federation. I, uh, there's quite a lot of detail in there. Um, now, Ethiopia, I see, I see you've asked for the floor. Is this with your text proposal? Because uh, what I wonder is if we break for a cup of tea uh, and during the break we can pop your text up and then when we reconvene we can uh, consider it then. So for those who are with us online, if you wouldn't mind gracing us 10 minutes of your time, uh, we'll have a cup of tea here in Geneva to make sure we're fully energised and Namibia, I can come back to you as well after the break. Thank you. Let's reconvene in 10 minutes, please. Welcome back, colleagues, and uh, we're on the home straight. So we'll continue our discussions now. Um, it was a very well-timed uh, coffee break. I won't take any credit for that. Uh, but in this regard, and showing the way for, our f uh, for how we will approach our work on the, the IHR amendments, we've got an updated version of this paragraph that addresses the points that have been raised by a number of delegations. It is considerably shorter, but also very clear about our intent. So what I'm going to do is read out uh, the up an updated paragraph 5, and I'll, I now have the full support of the text editors. So, the first sentence would finish after the words January 2024, full stop, and just delete the rest of that sentence, please. Uh, sorry, just the rest of the sentence, not the rest of the paragraph, of the, um, Chapeau, so I just need the, some of that text. 
text back, please. Okay. So just delete up until the word processes. Okay. And then it would continue. In this regard, the working group agreed. <laughs> sorry. Yes, the working group agreed to continue its work. Between January and May 2024. And then in response to the point raised by Russia, discussed with the legal counsel and I think others during the break, we would actually propose just deleting the first of these subparagraphs. <laughs> And it would then delete the word further. And actually, this wouldn't be a, a subparagraph. It would just con continue the main paragraph. Thank you. The Director General will submit to the 77th Health Assembly the package of amendments agreed by the working group. By the, by the WGIHR. And then uh, we could, have, having had a discussion with Ethiopia and Namibia uh, that I've had during the break, that also deals with the principal issue they were concerned about uh, with the deletion of that um, second part of the first sentence. So, This uh, rework formulation obviously is much shorter uh, and it effectively states our intention to keep, uh, keep working between January and May. And this is relevant because, of course, up until this meeting, we hadn't had any further meetings scheduled between January and May. But uh, we've agreed at this meeting we will do so and we've even um, proposed some potential dates for that. So this rework formulation is uh, based on the feedback we'd received, discussions during the break, and it has the advantage of being uh, much shorter and a hope clearer. So just give me a chance to have a quick look at that. Uh, notwithstanding, we'll also pick up the point that Malaysia raised uh, when we get to paragraph 8, uh, which was just around the potentially making an explicit reference to the Bureau continuing to develop up some Bureau text proposals, but we'll address that in, when we get to paragraph 8. Good. Thank you very much for all the input there uh, and for good work to get a, a, a better formulation. <coughs> 